Good morning. I am getting ready to go to work today and I'm feeling really, really good. If you guys saw my last weekly vlog, I was talking about how I've just been feeling blah for a while now between quarantine and, you know, just like the weird past year that we've had. But I don't know, like the last couple of weeks, I've just felt refreshed. And I don't know if it's because like the weather's getting warmer, um, because I'm in a process of moving and like just like that feeling of starting new. But I am using the Dyson Corral cordless flat iron. Love that it's cordless. If you guys would like a review on that, by the way, because I've had it for about a month now and I definitely do notice less heat damage from it it's crazy because like it works but then when you touch your hair right after it doesn't feel super hot like sometimes when i use a flat iron on my hair i cannot like if i touch my hair right after it burns and this does not do that it's weird how it doesn't get hot but yet somehow it actually works but yeah today i just have one client at the salon because then i have an eye doctor appointment later this afternoon um, it's my one week post-op for my LASIK eye surgery. At this point now, I should hopefully get the okay to just like do normal things, get my eyes wet, get my eyelash extensions put back on, start wearing eye makeup again. But the client that I have coming in today is in for kind of like a corrective balayage. I think she had lightened her hair herself at home. I'm gonna finish styling my hair and then I'll, I don't know, it's like a really rainy, gross day outside, so I have no idea what I'm going to wear, because it's kind of cold. Once I figure out what I'm wearing, I'll show you my outfit. Not looking forward to going out in this. <laughs> so here is what I'm wearing for today. I'm just wearing a plain cami tank top from Old Navy, workout leggings from Adidas, and this denim jacket. I think it's from Misguided. It's a few years old. And then I have on some black Adidas sneakers. Layered a couple necklaces. This one's from Ana Luisa. This one's from Vibe Season. Those are like the two websites where I get 99% of my gold jewelry from. So I will see you at the salon. Okay, so here is the deal with this client. She had colored her hair at home with a dark brown color, and then she decided she wanted to go a little bit lighter, so she used Color Oops, which is an at-home color remover, and it's, I, I'm, I'm guilty of using it myself in the past, but it's really harsh for your hair. And then after doing the Color Oops, she bleached her hair to balayage it. <laughs> so her hair had been through a lot, and the placement actually looked really good of her balayage. Everything was blended. She did a really good job, but you know, because she didn't use the best products, her hair wasn't in the greatest condition, but she did want to try to brighten it up a little bit more, get rid of the brassiness that she had on the ends, and just try to get as light as possible, of course, while still keeping her hair as healthy as possible. She wanted to keep her hair pretty long. So I just went through and did a foliage. I did two thin back-to-back -back teased slices. So after every two foils, I would leave hair out in between. And I did use Olaplex in every bowl of lightener that I used. I wanna say I started with 15 volume and worked my way up to 20 volume. I wanted to keep it pretty low to be as gentle as possible since her hair had been through a lot I knew that there was a good possibility that her hair would end up damaged if I used anything too strong and I highly highly suggest whenever you're doing a color correction make sure that you're really taking your time during the consultation get the clients full hair history find out everything that they've done to their hair within the last year or two and explain to them that their goal might not be attainable in just one appointment. It might take multiple sessions to get them where they wanna be, if it's even possible at all, depending on the condition of their hair and what they've previously done to it. I always let my clients know that color corrections can be really unpredictable. Of course, I'm gonna 
try my absolute best to give them what they want and keep their hair healthy throughout the process but you really kind of just have to take it one step at a time. Luckily, this client was super understanding and she came into her appointment knowing that her hair had been through a lot and we might not be able to get her extremely light in one appointment and that we might end up needing to cut a few inches off of her length to keep her hair healthy, which is what ended up happening. You'll see in a minute. And then here I'm just doing a money piece. She wanted something a little bit brighter around her face, but still blend and soft so typically what I do is a weave in the front followed by two back-to-back -back teased slices she also wanted her hair to be more dimensional she did not want the ends to be all solid light so as you can see I did leave some of her ends out but she didn't love the brassy tone so I took Redken Shades EQ, I mixed equal parts 6NA with 6N, and I just went over everything that I had left out. So that way we could get rid of any of that brassiness. I covered over all of the ends of her hair, and then I also went through in between each foil, because I had teased her hair, some of that brassiness was in the teased area and I obviously didn't want to leave that out so I just went through with my brush and I just kind of pressed into the teased area as well that way I was able to neutralize all of that brassiness without having to go back through and doing a shadow root or something like that later on So after that, I let her process for, I wanna say 20 to 30 minutes probably. I did put her under the heat lamp, which looking back, maybe I should have just let her process without heat, but you can see I had her at a distance, the lamp wasn't turned all the way up, and then once she was done processing, I mixed equal parts 7GB with 7N and 8GI. She wanted a bit of a warmer result, she wasn't looking to be super ashy, so I just applied that all over clean, damp hair at the sink and I let that process for the full 15 to 20 minutes. So after I rinsed out her toner, I brought her over to my chair and she did want to trim so I did just a little bit of a trim you know I could definitely feel that some of her ends needed to come off it also had been a while since her last haircut and then as I was blow drying as you can see here I started to kind of panic a little bit as you can see her hair was just taking a really long time to dry my brush was kind of getting stuck in it and if you look at the ends at the back of her hair some of her ends just kind of look like I don't even know like an animal was chewing on them so I decided let me turn on the camera and record this part and just be totally honest with you guys and share that this kind of stuff happens like I said her hair had been through a lot she used a lot of not the best products on it at home and then, you know, after lightening it again at the salon and putting heat on it, she ended up with a little bit of damage. Luckily, it was all just on the ends and I was able to save her hair and it was totally fine without having to chop it all off. But yeah, you can kind of see I was struggling a little bit. It's so important to just be honest with your client. Like as soon as I started to notice the damage, I was just honest with her because they're going to know they're going to feel that your brush is getting stuck in their hair. They're going to notice the look of panic on your face. So I just told her, yeah, you know, I'm noticing a little bit of damage. It's fine. I'll be able to, you know, do a little bit of a cut and remove all of it. And she kind of expected that going into it, because like I said, during the consultation, we talked about everything that she had done to her hair and she knew that it had been through a lot and that a little damage was definitely a possibility. And when the hair is in that kind of state, it's just really hard to work with when it's wet. So I wanted to get her completely dry first and then I went through and cut off another inch or two off of her length. Wherever my comb got stuck in her hair, 
that's where I cut it off. And then she did have a little bit of damage that came up a little bit higher than that. So I went in and I just did some like really soft blended layers. So that way I could remove all of the damage, but without having to cut off a significant amount of her length since she did want to keep her hair fairly long. And this was the final result of her hair. I was really happy with how it came out, all things considered. I didn't love how it looked outside. I feel like the light reflected off of her orange shirt and just made the color of her hair look a lot warmer than it was. But you guys saw in the previous clip how it looked in the salon. That's more true to how it looked in real life. And you can see that after doing that little bit of a trim, her hair actually looked really nice and healthy, the ends looked nice and full, so crisis averted. <laughs> Ooh, got my new car mount set up. So my client, as you guys saw, it was a color correction situation and her hair, despite my best efforts, I ended up getting a little bit damaged. Luckily, it was just the ends. Oh, you're like moving all over the place. Yeah, luckily it was just the ends, so I was able to cut off like 98% of what was damaged. And by the time I was done, her hair did feel really good, so it was okay. And this freaking camera, how do I, I, I don't wanna mess with it to try to tighten it and then end up loosening something and have it all fall. So I'm sorry that it keeps moving. I was hoping that we would be able to get a little bit lighter, but because of everything that she had going on in it color wise and you know everything that she had done to it previously, I got her as light as I could without completely destroying all of her hair. And normally I don't like there to be any damage at all. So the fact that I had to cut a few inches off of her ends wasn't ideal and I honestly wasn't even going to include all of that like in my mind I was gonna just show you me toning her and then I was gonna just show the final hair but as I was going through and blow drying and I'm like having that oh shit moment in my head I was like you know what let me turn my camera on and record this and just keep it real because these kinds of things happen and I know it can be overwhelming when you're seeing all of these pictures of beautiful hair on Instagram and it feels like they never mess up and everything that they do always comes out perfect and that's not always the case you know we all have mess up sometimes and even if it's not like your fault as the stylist sometimes stuff just happens and she wasn't like surprised or upset by it that's why it's also really important too to make sure that you're thorough during your consultations and you cover your bases and you really know what the client's hair history is and you really explain realistic expectations and if it is a color correction situation let them know like hey there is a possibility that you might have to lose a few inches like your hair might end up getting a little damage obviously that is never the goal but it is always a possibility and as long as you are okay with that risk then we can continue and then if something like that does happen be honest right away I've had so many moments in the past where you know I'm blow drying and something maybe isn't looking right or it's not feeling right I notice that there's a little bit of damage and I get nervous and I don't want to tell the client I don't want to panic them like I want to kind of keep drying it just to you know make sure and assess the situation first but I feel like then they can see the panic in my face and then I just feel like terrible and and you're tempted to just like quick cover it up with some curls and then send them on their way but they're going to eventually notice and it's always better to just be honest and try to fix your mistake as soon as possible like you should be pointing it out to them before they notice something on their own so hopefully that was helpful for you guys who are also stylists out there um hopefully that's relatable for you and makes you feel a little bit better and like you're not alone if you're ever in a situation like that because like I said it happens to all of us and if it's never happened to you yet 
it probably will at some point at least once and for clients out there keep in mind that if you are ever going in for a color correction if you have been doing a whole bunch of crap to your hair at home just know that you might not be able to get to your goal right away in one appointment it might take multiple sessions it's going to cost a lot of money and your hair you know you might end up having to cut a few inches off of the ends um, in order to keep your hair healthy anyway i am going to go get my eyes checked out now and i will see you guys tomorrow oh i'm getting my lash extensions back on in the morning ah! i'm so excited for that so i will see you then your girl is back just got my lashes done oh love them so much so excited and now i feel like myself again and by the way i've been getting hybrid lashes which is a combination of volume fans and just like individual classic ones so that it gives them a more wispy look and they're still full but not like super super dark anyway i am going to head to the salon now i have two clients today one is a blonde like highlight retouch i i'm not sure if we're, she's she's in for a partial but we might end up doing a full i don't know i have to see what her hair is looking like and then my second client is my friend molly and i don't really know what we're doing with her hair i'm gonna bring you along and show you what i'm doing so this
so um i'm like the worst vlogger ever the camera that i have been using is new and i only have one battery for it i need to buy additional batteries i know and i didn't think to bring the battery charger with me so yeah the last clip that you saw was all i got and then my battery died i was able to just snap a few after photos they're not the best um the lighting wasn't the best like camera literally kept dying i was able to get one picture it would die i would turn it on and off get another quick picture and i was only able to get a few and then it just wouldn't turn back on Ugh, i'm really annoyed because i wanted to really record the entire process and show you guys the whole thing and like the toning and all that it's difficult when you're trying to record what you're doing and you don't have somebody to help you and you're also focusing obviously on doing your client's hair and being in the moment with them and talking with them and giving them a good experience and also like moving quickly and not like taking a long time because you know especially the days when I have multiple clients I want to make sure that I'm getting down on time so that I'm not running behind for my next client and it's just a lot there's a lot going on so it gets a little overwhelming sometimes and I'm honestly not always the best um, at getting everything but I'm gonna keep trying for you guys keep getting better but um, I have two clients today I'm really excited too because my first client just got a puppy a little bulldog puppy and she's bringing her with her and I'm so excited I can't wait to meet her and I'm so excited because I'm bringing Benny with me today and I am so excited to see them play together I will see you at the salon how's everything going good good hi hi oh there they go <laughs> oh god and they're off oh get them Where'd you go? Where'd they go? Oh my god, I love you. Oh, so cute. Not gonna bed until I put it down. Yeah, like, and she'll just sit there and go for her. Nina, no. No. <laughs> Don't break your bed. Yeah, our dogs are super particular and they will only drink outside water from the like frosted outside. So they'll stand at the door until we open it and fill the bowl for them. Every oh, so I've done this client's hair a few times in the past before, but she has since moved very far away. She was just in town visiting this day. And the last time she had her color done was by another stylist. And at this point, she just wanted to do a partial balayage so that we could bring the lighter pieces up a little bit higher blend everything out a little bit nicer and mainly brighten up around her face so i just did a freehand painting technique with clay lightener and as you can see i mainly just focused in the front around her hairline making sure that everything was super blended And you can see here, I actually used my foiling comb and I teased the top of the section a little bit before I started applying the product. That way it would just ensure maximum blending. And during her consultation, she told me that she really didn't care to apply anything to the back underneath of her hair. She wanted it all focused up top and around her face. So you can see in the back, I literally only did one panel. And then for her toner, I mixed equal parts 7N with 8WG from Redken Shades EQ. And I just applied that all over right at the sink. There was no need to do a shadow root or anything like that because I made sure that my application was as blended and seamless as possible. So I just worked that through her hair, made sure that everything was evenly saturated, left that to process for about 15 minutes, and then this was her final hair. And it's really crazy how in the back, even though I only did that one panel, it still made such a difference. So it just goes to show that sometimes less is more. And then my second client of the day was actually new and I was so shocked when I saw how long her hair was. And she sat down and she told me, let's chop it all off. So I was very excited about this. We did a diagonal forward cut and she wanted a lot of layering and texture in the back. So that's exactly what we did. And I 
love it. I think it's so fun. Hey guys, it's Saturday. I got home from work a few hours ago. Yeah, it's already almost seven at this point. Today was a nice, quick, easy day. I didn't record much of like the process of everything that I was doing today because it was just like a busy day. Saturday is always like the busiest day at the salon. There's a lot of people there. But the first one I had did a gloss on her just to kind of tone down her balayage pieces. And then we did a haircut. Her hair is like so, so thick and she hates it. So. Um, whenever we cut her hair, she always wants to just like debulk as much as possible. So we cut a few inches off. We did like shorter in the back, slightly longer in the front, and then just like a whole bunch of texturized layers. And I just like really went in there with my texturizing shears and tried to like thin it out as much as I could while still, you know, keeping like a nice pretty shape. And that came out really nice. And then my second client had virgin hair, which was amazing. And we just did a foliage on her. She just wanted something to change it up, um, go a little brighter and lighter, but still like keep it really natural and blended. And she said that she still wanted to feel like a brunette. So um, that's one thing that I always ask when people come in and they want like balayage or foils or any kind of like dimensional color. And if they're like a brunette naturally, I always ask, do you want to still feel like a brunette or do you want to feel like you're blonde? or somewhere in between and that usually will give me a good idea of like how heavy-handed I should go with my highlights and like you know the light pieces that I'm adding I feel like I used to struggle in the past like I always would overdo it and over highlight and I wasn't leaving enough dimension so that's a little trick that I've kind of learned and I gauge like based on the inspiration photos that they show me I look at it and I'm like okay what is like the ratio of blonde to brown and then I make sure that when I'm applying my foils I'm keeping that same ratio because it's like so easy to just like get in the zone and start working and then like you're just you want to highlight everything and then you end up making them maybe blonder than they wanted so now I am home like I said I've been home for the last few hours I took a little nap at one point and I'm gonna lie and now I've been sitting here binging the show shrill on Hulu. I am going to continue watching that and that is going to conclude this vlog. Let me know down below. I'm always looking for your feedback. When it comes to the weekly vlogs, you know, I try to include some salon footage and also like just what I'm kind of doing in my personal life because I feel like the salon stuff can get a little bit repetitive sometimes, but I'm not always doing like vlog worthy things in my personal life. So I don't know. I don't know. Let me know what you guys want to see. I definitely want to start doing some more sit down videos like now that I am kind of almost fully moved in here. I would like to start doing that again, like reacting to your hair photos, reacting to your hair horror stories, all of that kind of stuff. Just sharing more like behind the chair type of advice. So let me know if you have any video requests. That's going to be it for this vlog. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.